Hi, Attorney Steve Vondren here with you. This is my top 10 tips on how to better your chances to win your small claims case. Okay, and small claims in California anyway, where I practice law, California and Arizona, a small claims case can actually be a really big case. I mean, up to $10,000. So you definitely want to make sure you're ready to win and that you're doing the things that you need to do to prepare to go in there and take charge, take care of business, okay? So I've come up with my top 10 list to basically help improve your chances of winning, okay? Number one is to prepare your case in great detail. What does that mean? That means you wanna make sure if you're the plaintiff that you're doing everything possible to win your case. You're researching the facts, the law, you're getting documentation, you're interviewing witnesses, you're getting statements, you're, you're getting witnesses to come in with you. Basically, unturning every rock, taking it very, very serious, and putting some time into it so that you know your case cold when you walk into court and you're ready to show the judge what happened and why you're entitled to damages. You know, as a plaintiff in a small claims case, you're responsible for proving your case by a preponderance of the evidence. Preponderance of the evidence means it's more likely than not that you've been wronged and you've been injured. So you're going to, it's your job as the plaintiff to make that case. If you're the defendant, it's your job to raise those defenses and tell the judge why it's not true, poke holes in their story, and raise your defenses, and point out the law, why the law isn't why this person thinks it is. Sometimes people come in with injury, but the law allowed you to do whatever it was you were doing. So tip number one, prepare your case, know it cold, have your documentation, be ready to go in there and seriously impress the judge, okay? That's tip number one. Now realize if you don't answer, you're, if you get filed, a, a small claims lawsuit gets filed against you and you don't answer, then the court can enter a default judgment against you. So make sure you're preparing your case, doing what you need to do to get ready. Number two, dress nicely and professionally. Don't go in there to, with your baseball hat on, on backwards and, you know, uh, you know, out party until two o'clock the night before and coming in with your hair up to the ceiling and, you know, sleep in your eyes and stuff. You have to take this serious. This is your day in court. This is your chance to prove your case and make your points. Okay. So, but what you want to do is dress professionally. Um, what I would recommend is not, not necessarily what I'm wearing today for my video, but to wear a nice button down shirt or a nice blouse if you're a woman. Um, you know, some, some, um, don't overdo it with jewelry or uh, gaudy things. The, things are going to draw attention to you. Don't wear a, a crazy t-shirt that says, you know, you know, life sucks or something. You know, think about it. Dress nice. Dress for the occasion. Um, the courtroom is a place where you want to have a certain amount of respect, courtesy, dignity. You, typically when you go into a small claims case, you're going to see a lot of people in there. So being dressed for success is one thing that's going to help you. It's going to make you look better. It's going to make you feel more competent and may make the judge take you a little bit more serious. So you may want to give that some thought. Uh, usually recommend if you're a guy, go ahead and wear a button down and a tie and a jacket. It's not going to kill you. It's one day. So tip number two, dress professionally. Tip number three, when you hear the gavel go down, be ready. Be there on time. Um, what a mistake a lot of people make is they go, well, you know, my court's in L.A. at 9 o'clock and, you know, I'll head out at 8 o'clock. I shouldn't hit any traffic. Should be okay today. It's Labor Day. I don't think, you know, not Labor Day, but it's, it's uh, Tuesday and I, Tuesdays usually aren't that busy. And then you, lo and behold, you end up in traffic. You end up becoming, getting late and you're racing through the courtroom doors with your robe on fire. That's not how you want to do it. That makes a bad impression. And you know, judges are really smart people. They look around and they know what's going on in their courtroom, okay? So you don't want to be bursting in at the last minute with your Marge Simpson hair up to the ceiling. Get there on time. Be prepared, okay? And by the way, part of being prepared, uh, back to step one, is having, what I recommend is having three copies of your evidence, of the documents you're going to use. One for you, one for your opponent, one for the judge, okay? That way, if anybody says, let me see that, yeah, I have a copy right here for you, Your Honor. 
Um, typically in a small claims case, the judge is going to make you exchange evidence outside anyway. The judge is going to say, have you exchanged evidence? And you're going to need to say, yes, I gave them a copy of everything I had. And, you know, it's there's no more trial by ambush, so you're going to have to give it up. I recommend making three copies. So be on time, dress professionally, have your case all prepared. That's half the battle, honestly. If you can get there and do that, you're well on your way to small claims success. Tip number four, Attorney Steve's small claims tips. Keep your presentation short and concise and to the point. Here's what I recommend. Get out a piece of paper when you're going in and make a bullet point of five things that you want to talk about about your case. Don't have a list of, of three pages long, okay, because the judge isn't going to sit there and listen to all that. You don't have that kind of time, and the judge, for the most part, is not going to give you time to do several pages of notes. Have your five main points, what went wrong, your five main defenses, so forth and so on, and be ready to argue those points and be concise as to those points, okay? You don't want to start rambling all over the place and you know not really knowing what you're saying and you get all emotionally involved. Settle down, take a deep breath, and stay on your points, okay? Now, again, make them move in, get out. The judge may cut you off, the judge you may get to point two, and the judge may cut you off and ask you a question. That's the judge's right, that's going to happen, expect it. But it's okay to keep track of where you are and then come back and try to get your other points in if you can. Okay? So, but have your sort of your attack list of the points that you want to try to get out there and, and get those out there. But short, concise, to the point, that's what you want. Tip number four. Tip number five. You see this all the time, Judge Judy, uh, People's Court, all these things, right? They, the, the two, the plaintiff and defendant start getting into a yelling match with each other. Start, you did that, that's not true. You start cutting each other off. You're angry, you're emotionally involved. Try to put that on the back burner. Try to be courteous to your opponent. I know that sounds completely strange, and I know that's not warfare. I know all that. But do yourself a favor. Try to be courteous to your opponent. It's going to show the judge that you're a respectful and a thoughtful person, and it's going to make the proceedings a little easier to manage for the judge. So be courteous to that person. If they cut you off, just be patient. If you need to ask, say, Your Honor, may I, may I add something to that? Or, Your Honor, if I may, um, Your Honor, do you mind if I add something to that? So be respectful. If they want to go and just blabber off at the mouth, let them do it. Be respectful. You will get your turn. Come back to your points on your sheet and try to make your points, okay? So being respectful to your opponent, tip number five. Tip number six, sometimes in the course of a, uh, I do a lot of law and motion for litigation matters, sometimes in the course of a, of a motion, you know you're right. You've cited, well, in our case we do motions where we cite the law, but you know you're right and the other opponent just starts going all over the place and you know you're winning. You know you can tell by the way the judge is asking questions or the way the judge is looking that you're winning. In that event, shut up. If you're winning, shut up. That's rule number six, okay? If you, you have to be smart enough to see that point because you, you may be wrong, but keep an eye open. If it looks like the, your opponent's going down the wrong road and the judge isn't buying any of it, okay. Take off the attack, because chances are the judge is going to be on your side. Don't accidentally start blurting out all sorts of things that are going to make the judge go, Oh, well, I didn't know that. What's that now? Now you're potentially going down the wrong road. So if you're winning, zip it. Zippy long stocking. Okay? Um, tip number seven, small claims. You have to, once you get your evidence out there, if you get sort of a, a final chance to make a final statement, if the judge says something like, anything else, um, Mr. Jones, um, is there anything else, Would it, is there anything else the parties want to say? That's your time to give your plea. Why justice demands that you find in my favor, Your Honor. This is clear. This is your chance to be a lawyer, okay? This is your, your day in the sun, your 15 minutes of fame. It's not exactly the place you would want to be. I know that. 
but this is your chance to make that, that argument that just sells the judge and just convinces the judge, persuades the judge that you're right and that you should prevail over your opponent. Okay, so given that, and keep it pithy, don't keep it short, don't, don't start going off into all sorts of different tangents, keep it short, one, two, three, the three reasons I deserve to win, the three reasons I've proven my case, the three reasons the defense, uh, the plaintiff has completely failed here, Your Honor. So that's your chance to plead for justice, okay? Tip number eight, don't forget, as a plaintiff, you must prove your damages. If you're a defendant and doing a cross-claim, you must also prove your damages or your set-offs or whatever you might have. So be prepared with that documentation to prove what your damages are. Very important. Sometimes people forget that point. They say, well, I've been ripped off and, you know, this and that, or he owes me money, he owes me back rent. Have the proof, the documentation, the bank statements, the receipts, whatever it is that you need to prove your case, make sure you have them. That's all back to step one, preparation, preparing for your case, okay? Number nine, every now and then, you're going to want to know what your law is in your case. You're dealing with a, a contract case or, you know, it's an oral promise. You're going to want to know, what is the law in California? Do you know the law? Have you found even one case that you can tell the judge, you know, Your Honor, even in looking at this case, Smith v. Jones, 185, Calap 2nd, 322, a 1978 case, it said oral promises are enforceable, Your Honor. Um, you may be able to help your case by knowing what the law is that applies to your case. That also ties back in with step number one, preparing your case. You know, my old baseball coaches used to tell me the five P's. Proper planning prevents poor performance. Say it with me. Proper planning prevents poor performance. That's what you're looking for, okay? Going in with confidence, looking good, you're ready, you're prepared, you know your case, you know your law, you're respectful and courteous. If you get nervous, do what they do on American Idol before you go in. Don't do this while you're there. Before you go in, just shake it out. Take a couple deep breaths and relax, okay? Be courteous to your opponents, be courteous to your judge. State your case nice and succinctly. That's how you do it, okay? That's how you do it. So that's tip number nine. Finally, tip number ten is enjoy your day in court, okay? In most cases, we're talking about money issues. Uh, money can always be paid. If you're, you know, you can pay it off. You can pay it off. You can work out payments if you lose. I mean, different things you can do. Bottom line, it's not heart surgery. Some of your life's usually not at risk when you're in court on a civil case and a small claims. So enjoy your day in court. If you prepare yourself, you're there on time, you follow these simple steps. When you finally get up to the podium, you're going to be nervous for the first minute or so. That's okay. Take a deep breath. And then enjoy your day in court. Get your bullet points out there. Keep it short, keep it sweet, and you should do just fine, okay? Does that make sense? Oh, and by the way, you're probably not going to get a decision while you're there. The courts don't want to see you duking it out on the way out the door. The judge will probably take it under submission and send, mail you a decision later. But don't go and be a fool on a stool on the way out outside the courtroom either, uh, trying to get enough fights or verbal chows. Take it easy, okay? Go about your business. In, in life, these things happen, so just go about your business. Those are Attorney Steve's top 10 tips. I hope you like this. Um, if, it, if it's helpful for you, how about a thumbs up would be nice on YouTube, that coveted thumbs up. Don't be afraid to give me one of those. Share it on Facebook if you like it too. Anyway, we appreciate your viewership. Subscribe to our channel. This is Attorney Steve. This is how you do it, improving your chances to win in a small claims court. Now go out and do it. Best of luck to you.